we've been working on this project at Rails and Trails Conservancy for a long time, and to see Ian coming out here to do this section of it is really inspiring, and it's kind of exactly what we wanted it to be. A rail trail follows a former railroad grade, which only would go up to about 2%. And it's exciting to see Ian using this with his chair, energy and momentum out there for other folks to use this as accessible infrastructure. This is a place for people of all varieties, of all abilities to be able to get out. We just got to hang out in Indiana last week on the Great America Rail Trail. Jimmy was out in Idaho. We're doing lots of stuff around the country. So we're just excited to put Ian's message out there to pile on all the rest of that good stuff. Um, I got to meet Ian a few months ago out in Port Angeles, Washington. Um, I was out on the Olympic Discovery Trail, Ian's favorite trail in his backyard. Uh, we got to have Mexican food together. I got to meet his mom as well over there. Uh, really good time. Super impressed with Ian's sense of humor. I think we laughed a lot at that meal. And I was saying to your friends who were going with you that you're going to need that on this journey for sure. <laughs> you're going to have a good time, but make sure to, to keep that sense of humor going. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I want to introduce Ian to, to welcome you all to his kickoff event. First off, guys, thank you, and well, thank you, Kevin, for the uh, for the introduction. It was great seeing you out on our uh, home trail, and uh, thank you all for being here to to see me off and, and to be part of it for some of you. I am so excited, and let me tell you why the heck I'm even out here doing this. So in 2008, I broke my neck riding my bike home from college. I was going too fast, you know, hit hit a curve, hit a curve. And, uh, and went into a tree and broke my neck. The next four years were miserable. They were absolutely a dark time, and I spent all my time watching television. Andy Griffith Show and I Love Lucy. And it wasn't much of a life. And I finally uh, went out and started to explore the Olympic Discovery Trail. <laughs> now my background is biology, and uh, to out be out there and finally see, you know, that, that first daffodil pop up, or to see that you know, the, the, the first baby robin of the season. I mean, those things really, they really fire me up. And, uh, and I, I couldn't stop, so I just kept going out there. And I, I found my happy place, I found my passion. And I've continued to ride every day. I haven't missed a day in almost six years out on the, on the trail. And, uh, and I'm so excited to get out, get out here. Now, one awesome thing that I've been able to do over the years is bring other people in chairs out on the trail with me. And, and we've really been able to develop community that way. And that's what trails are. And that's what United Spinal also creates. Our chapters throughout our nation that, that are little pockets of communities. And having infrastructure where we can all meet and do something in a safe, accessible way is spectacular. Speaking of United Spinal and Rails to Trails, I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful uh, partnership and there is so much um, advantage for both that could, could be made from this. I, I want to, before I, uh, before I head off and pass it on to these folks, I want to thank my team. I got uh, Jimmy Quinnell, very tall man over here, and I got Dr. B, or Josh Blaustein, right there. He'll also be uh, riding with me. Uh, I got my mom, Tina. And she's got her and one other caregiver, Edwin Menez, is, uh, is keeping me alive back home. But uh, I love, I love ride-alongs. Anyone who likes to ride along the way, please join me. And from that, I'm going to pass it on. Is it, is it Monica next? All right. Monica is going to go up and say a few words. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monica Wiley and I serve as the Board of Directors for United Spinal Association. Before I start with what I'm going to say this morning, I want to thank Ian and everyone here with the Great American Trail for this opportunity to be here to support this and support Ian and everything that he is doing in terms of showing what accessibility looks like and how people with disabilities do have the right to have access to the land and access to nature. So just a little bit of a brief, brief background about me. I have an incomplete spinal cord injury caused by a drunk driver that killed my entire family at the age of nine. I uh, was paralyzed from the waist down, but as I like to say, God had greater plans for me, and so the swelling around my spine subsided, and I was able to feel below my legs, and now I walk with a cane. 
I'm here before you this morning. I'm so delighted to be here before you this morning because this is very important to me, not just to be a representative of United Spinal and to support my, my great individuals here from my community, the cross disability community, but it's important for us just to show that we have the right to have access to everything else that everyone else has the opportunity to do and to be able to socialize, to be able to ride. I am an individual that rides a three-wheel bike. I love bike riding. And one of the challenges that I see as a bike rider riding a three-wheel bike, it is the lack of as access to curbs and being able to ride along with everyone else. That's unacceptable. And I've been known as one of those individuals that gets into some good trouble, a little bit of a pit bull in the skirt. So I'm one of those type of folks that will continue to raise hell to make sure that there's access for everyone. Accessibility is just for people with disabilities. Accessibility is for all. Access for all. So we need to make sure that that's exactly what we're doing to make sure that everyone is included. And so I close with this. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here this morning, for supporting us, for supporting Ian, for supporting the next speaker that's up. And I'm delighted to go ahead and pass the mic to her. And so thank you so very much for having me. I wish I could be there with you, but I will be there with you in spirit. Ian, I'll be cheering you on. Thank you so very much. You guys have a great rest of the morning. Hey everybody, and thanks for coming out. My name is Jeremy Bazell, and I am with the uh, National Park Service. I am actually the uh, coordinator for accessibility at the national office. So what we do is we provide technical assistance and training and policy interpretation to help our 400 plus um, National Park Service units become more accessible. Um, I've been doing that for about eight years, and uh, I have actually had the pleasure of just happened to be at Mount Rainier when Ian was there. So we have had the chance to take a hike together at Mount Rainier. Um, and I wanted to use that as an example of how we try to think about accessibility in national parks and access to the outdoors in the national parks. Um, there probably was a group of close to 10 people in wheelchairs out at Mount Rainier. Um, and uh, while we were on paved trails, we were not on what we would legally define as an accessible trail. As a federal agency, we have certain standards we have to meet in order to qualify a trail as, access as an accessible trail. And what we're really trying to do is we're really trying to change the dialogue around that and say, you know, every trail is accessible to someone. So it's not about saying, well, these trails are accessible and mean, that means they're for these people and these trails are not accessible. It's really more about what can we do to provide people with disabilities the right information they need to make their own decisions about the trails that they use and the kinds of equipment that they're going to use on those trails, rather than us saying, these are accessible trails and these are not. What, what is the slope of the trail? What is the width of the trail? Um, you know, how long is the trail? So that a person can decide, oh, well, with this piece of equipment, I will have no problem navigating that trail. Um, and that's really where we want to focus our effort. Um, and, and folks like Ian help us do that because the more people with disabilities we have coming to parks and demonstrating their ability to access our wonderful natural places, the more we're gonna respond as an agency. Um, and, and I think that, that we're right now in this moment where clearly uh, the President Biden and his administration is focused on diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. The Department of Interior has a strategic plan that specifically calls out the need to increase access to recreation for underserved communities. Um, the, the Federal Interagency Committee on Outdoor Recreation has been resuscitated after many years of dormancy. Um, so this is a perfect time to have events like this, to have these conversations, to have Ian setting an example for others, to encourage people to get out there because I think we fight both not just a physical barrier, but an attitudinal barrier. 
um, it, the, the, and the attitudinal barrier being people being made to feel like they don't belong as well as people believing they don't belong. Um, and something's got to give there. So I think, Ian, you know, you're proving that you belong. Um, that, you know, that you belong on the trails just like everyone else does, and you deserve the benefits that everyone else deserves. Um, and I think with events like this and with you coming out to Olympic and to Mount Rainier, um, you know, that's a conversation we can have on a daily basis with um, Park Service staff. And maybe that gets us to a place where not only that, but we have more people working for the Park Service who have disabilities. So Ian, you can see people who look like you working at our visitor centers and um, out in the back country. So I, I wish you the best on this journey. Um, and I hope you get some great uh, chili when you're in Ohio. And I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Juliet Rizzo now to uh, close this out. Thank you. Ian said he was bringing people out, and we thank you. Give yourselves a hand for coming out today. And one of the things that Ian did is he brought me out as a person who was severely immunocompromised and could not come out during the pandemic, not even to get groceries by myself for two years. This is my first day out, Ian, because of you. We have so many people of all abilities that can take on opportunities. Not only does Ian bring people out and RTC and United Spinal and the National Park Service, you're bringing people outside, but you are also giving them a voice, Ian. Let's give him a hand for giving people a voice. And all of you, hold up your signs right now. Your signs say, let's go, Ian. I want to hear those voices. One, two, three. Let's go, Ian. Those voices are more important today than ever, and that was just practice for something later on, so get ready. With those voices, people with disabilities, as our speakers have said, want to be included. And today we have diversity, equity, and inclusion as part of the equation. But we add with Ian and with everyone else, accessibility, D-I-E-N-A. However, people with disabilities don't just want to be a part of the A in accessibility. We want to be a part of it all, right, Ian? Yes. So with that said, rail trails are incredible. I am a proud board member of RTC and all of the great things that rail trails do and can do as we form the community that Ann has talked about. We have got young people with disabilities right now going to school on rail trails when they can't even ride the school bus because of immunocompromised conditions. They can ride a walking school bus on a rail trail with a community like yourselves. So again, give yourselves a hand for that. United Spinal, you are doing all that you can to make sure that the equipment is available to do the great things that we do. And the equipment is ever changing right now. We have chairs that are, 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 we have treads on our chairs. We have tank chairs. We have chairs that can take us to the beaches and to the top of wherever we want to go, wherever Ian thinks is possible, it's possible for everyone. As the former Miss Wheelchair America, I heard from a young lady in New York and she said, do you know what disabled stands for? She said, deserving, individual, seeking, a better life, an education, and a date. People with disabilities want everything that anyone else does. And I take that E in education and I say exercise. Exercise our rights, get out there where we can make a difference, form community, rail trails are where community begins. Join Ian on his routes. Come out in any way that you possibly can. Follow him. Ian's ride on Facebook and Twitter. How important that is. And thank you, Ian. Ian, for being the story that needs to get out there. Yesterday, I was looking at a pair of socks, and that sock said, inclusion matters. Ian says, inclusion matters. It only matters if we see you out there with us. As he comes through your state, please join. And I see you nodding over here because we need more Ians. We need more of us out there making the difference that Jeremy has just said will make the difference in the federal agencies, in the corporations, in the companies, 
with the nonprofits. And right now, we need to be louder than those folks on Capitol Hill over there today. So everyone supporting Ian, come up here now. And I mean now, bring your signs. You practiced something a minute ago. And I mean everybody that supports Ian, come over here right now. I want the nation to see the support that Ian has as he moves forward on his journey. I want us to hold up our signs on camera. I want us to be the voices. Come on in, hold up a sign. And Corey, that means you over there. We have people representing all communities and cross disability communities, people with autism, people who, who have other um, abilities but want to get out there that need your help to make sure that the trails are accessible, whether it's by signage or whether it's by charging stations uh, you know, for wheelchairs. We need today's event to be the model for all of us of the partnerships that we can have moving forward. So with that said, and to shout out and louder than the folks across the mall, because the Disability and Abilities Voice is loud. That's On nice. the count of three, she said that's right. You should be standing next to me over here. Come on, get up, get up. Because as Ian said to me this morning, come on over, Ian, come on over here. Ian said to me this morning, the adventure begins now. Not just his adventure, but all of our adventures on rail trails. Amen. So, amen, he says. Say amen. it again. Amen. And so with that said, I'm going to let Ian join and uh, lead your chant. Everybody, let's go, Ian. 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 This is how we bring people together, Ian. Let us all remember that this experience is the beginning of a journey. Not just Ian's journey, not just for you, Ian, but for all of us together. As I've heard from my friends at the National Park Service, the experience begins as soon as you decide where you are going. And that's all of you from entry to exit. We need to make trails accessible, and we need all of your voices to make that possible. We hope that you continue to join us, and most of all, you know, Ian, get outside, and as Ian said, start your own adventure today. And as I close, I close with the words of a great disability leader and advocate, Justin Dart. And Justin Dart always closed, whether it was notes or in person, by saying, lead on. So I say, lead on, Ian! Lead on United Spinal National Park Service and RTC, but most importantly, ride on Ian. Can we say it as we close? Ride, ride on, on Ian. Ian. Ride, ride on, on Ian. Ian. Thank ride you.